What's up there SEO pros? Today I'm gonna to be talking about what you need to know when you're hiring people for your SEO agency. So I created a little list and this is what it is. I'm just gonna read it off and then we're gonna cover the different things that you need to know. Now, before we get into this, I've been running an SEO agency for about a year and a half and it's not until recently that it's become pretty successful. This uh, is the first month that I will be bringing in, I think, t around $15,000 uh, from the agency where I'm also not doing most of the work. Like I'm doing the work in the sense that I'm uh, managing some of the workers, checking the quality and bringing in the clients. But for the most part, I'm only working a few hours on that. And the rest of the time I spent on my SEO courses is bringing money in that way. So again, $15,000 isn't a lot of money. But for me being able to streamline the process in a way that makes a lot of sense, uh, it is pretty decent. So uh, the net profit, just to let you guys know, is about, let me get the, now, now this isn't including the overhead, but uh, my workers get paid about 30% of the overall retainer. So we're looking at 1,500 times 0 0.30 is 44. 4,500 and then that is, uh, you know, 1150 total, I believe. Let me just do 1500 minus 14, sorry, 15,000, which is 15,000 subtract 4,500. Or that's better. So uh, 10,500 net, and that's not including the other expenses, which is, you know, tools and all that kind of stuff. If you guys want to know more information about like what I'm spending money on, what you should probably spend on money on too, let me know and I'll make another video for that. Um, one other thing before I get started is make sure you join the Facebook group. It's called the White Hat SEO Network. If you're not in that, I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and join. Uh, we're actually doing a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. Uh, this month for the top person engaged in this group. And I also do a ton of other giveaways like free audits and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So anyways, uh, let's go over it. So first thing we're gonna talk about, pay people what they're worth. Next, don't be surprised if someone leaves to start their own business. Create an internal process that works really well. Charge clients monthly, but not locked in. Sell audits first. Realize that streamlining anything, especially services, isn't easy. And then find a solid project manager and teach them your processes. So let's start with the first part, which is paying people what they're worth. Now, when you bring somebody in and they first start, generally I say, you know, pay them hourly and see what they can do within an hourly time frame. Uh, don't don't keep them on hourly. You want to tell them, hey, look, you know, if you're beginning here, I want the goal to be that you get paid a percentage so that, you know, you, you and I can both make a lot of money. But to start out with, I just want to pay you hourly. And when I bring in most people that, you know, are SEOs or know a little bit about SEO, I'll pay them anywhere between, um, you know, $20 to uh, $25 an hour, again, depending on what they uh, know. Uh, if they're really knowledgeable, maybe I'll pay them more. But again, it's all comes down to what, how experienced these people are and what they're able to uh, get done within a given time frame. If they're really good at getting stuff done, they have fast turnarounds and I don't have to work on quality control as much, then it's going to be a lot easier for me to be like, hey, look, here's 30% for any monthly client. And um, just to let you guys know, most of my clients are anywhere from 1500 and up besides maybe a few clients that came in a long time ago that are under 1500. And uh, if you wanna see another video on how I charge clients, how I bring clients in and that kind of stuff, let me know and I'll make another video for that. But again, pay people what they're worth. Uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Don't get greedy. If you're taking all the money just because you wanna make money and you're not paying people what they're worth, they're gonna end up leaving and working for somebody else or building their own business. And you don't want that if they're really valuable and uh, they're helping you win. Uh, a good example of this, some of you guys see on my channel, I play this game StarCraft and it's a game where you start with a couple different um, uh, teammates and you all have to win the game together, but you all have to fight and kill the other team in order to win. Uh, running a business or running anything is very similar just because you end up becoming better or for instance, uh, you end up being uh, smarter or more intelligent at the game or whatever, but these other people are helping you. Doesn't mean that you're just going to, you know, go kill one of your teammates and then just leave them uh, in the dust. It's kind of a bad example, but the point is, is that if you end up winning, you want to win together. And uh, the more people you have on your team that are good and know what to do, and you're able to work well with, look, another client just paid 1500. 
um, that's how you're going to end up winning long term. You want people who can help you win. All right, on to the next one. So don't be surprised if someone leaves to start their own business. Now, this is especially true if you're not paying them enough. So again, if you're not paying them enough and you're expecting them to stick around, they're probably going to leave. Uh, if you also have a, a process that doesn't really make sense, uh, for instance, you bring them in, you are paying them enough, but what they're doing doesn't really make any sense and they're not happy. Don't be surprised if they you know, leave and go join another business, start their own business. That happened to me a bunch. The other thing too is uh, if you end up training people and they do really uh, well at their job <laughs> and uh, you know they end up becoming really smart, you know, that sometimes is just part of the game. You know, if, if people become good enough at business and they don't need you anymore and you're not bringing in enough work for them or they're not happy or they want to do something else, you know, that's just part of the game. So uh, create an internal process that works really well. So as some of you guys know from my SEO templates, which you can get off my website, I have a SEO audit template that I bring clients in with and then I let my workers, you know, use to sort of do implementations off of. But then I also have a uh, template, an internal agency template that I actually need to put up on my site that goes through sort of where we're at with all the clients and what, you know, we're doing for them and uh, uh, what all of the contact info is for the workers uh, and so on and so on. So uh, again, this would have to be a separate video, but I could create something to show you guys how I manage the whole agency in terms of uh, the internal workflow and giving people work and and making sure that you know I call in, check in on on them uh, every now and then, and sort of make sure that everybody's on the same page. But um, it also really depends on one of the other things that we're going to talk about, which is a project manager. So it's really important that the first person you hire is the person who's going to eventually become your lead SEO or project manager or whatever. Um, and what I mean by that is you want somebody who's going to be able to overview what other people are doing and teach them how to overview people based on the processes that you've created. Now, again, if you wanted to create my or uh, take my templates, the chase on your agency templates and the audit templates and all that stuff and use it for yourself. You could totally do that. And, um, this would be something that you could teach to somebody pretty easily. Uh, if they know a little bit about SEO, they can go in and start managing your clients and, um, and the future workers, as long as you're also, uh, staying on the same page with the lead SEO. So you're, the thing is, is that no matter what, even if you're, uh, making money and, and, and there's a CEO of the company or whatever, um, or a project manager, you're going to still have to do quality control for your company. No matter what, if, if you just leave your company and end up selling it, that's when you're not going to have to. But for the most part, um, you're always going to be somewhat connected. But the point is, is that you have to be, uh, have to find somebody who's going to be able to take a as much of a leadership role as possible so that they can kind of re relay to you what's going on and so that you don't have to continually check all of their work over and over. But at the very beginning of starting agency and starting um, hiring people and, and project managers, it's really important to see if these people can do what you need them to do at a really fast turnaround rate, which means the, the it's better to probably hire a 40 hour a week person than multiple 20 hour week people and seeing which one's going to um, pan out successfully. The other thing is, you know, you need to be fast to hire and fast to fire. So if somebody comes in and they're not doing what you need them to do and you give them a warning like, hey, look, this needs to be done better. And then you, you go back and see like the next day, hey, look, they still don't really know what they're doing. You need to get that person out of there and find somebody who's going to, uh, you know, take initiative and learn on their own. The biggest thing about finding people to hire is people who are willing to take initiative to learn, even if they don't know how. It's really important that if you see somebody come in and they, you know, try to learn something, but then they just give up, like the next time you try to talk to them, they say, oh, I, you know, I couldn't figure it out or whatever. That's the person who you do not want to be your project manager. That's the person that's going to be more of a worker, you know, uh, under the project manager that that person's going to have to cross check. But for the most part, you also want to try to make sure that most of the people on your team are, uh, good at problem solving in general, just because, um, you know, people are lower than a project manager or something doesn't mean that you want them to you know, be mindless slaves or just like VAs and other locations where, you know, they're not getting stuff done uh, on a, you know, uh, critical thinking level, unless it's really, really manual work. Like for instance, uh, just going and clicking buttons. So uh, in terms of 
uh, clientele, um, something that I recommend so that you can pay people uh, percentages is to charge your clients monthly, but not lock them in. So if you charge your clients monthly, uh, make sure you set up some sort of contract with something like Bonsai app where you can, again, uh, have them paying reoccurring so you don't have to invoice them every month because that can be a huge pain and sometimes people won't pay or they'll forget to pay or they'll you know just not want to pay and uh make sure you lock them in so that or i mean not lock them in make sure you put them up on a reoccurring billing so that you can uh start migrating your project managers or whoever you're paying over to a uh uh, percentage because people are going to work a lot better based off percentages than they are from working hourly so uh, in terms of your selling process i would recommend selling your audit first so anytime somebody contacts you for something uh, around seo just say hey look you know i got to do an audit from your for your website first before i can do anything um that's what i do for anybody who contacts me i say hey look you know we got to go do an audit for you we got to figure out what's going on with your site come up with a game plan and even though for the most part the audit is going to be very similar for most new websites in terms of look we need to go uh do keyword research we need to go met do benchmarking we need to figure out if there's any major duplicate content errors before besides the ones that we're probably seeing through uh, something like site colon name of site. It really depends on how big the site is. If it's a local site, it's a lot easier to audit and uh, you can tell people right away, hey, look, you need these things. Um, and if you're, it's a national site, there's also um, uh, very similar outlines unless you're dealing with huge, you know, multi thousands and thousands of web pages on a site. That's when it's going to be okay. Uh, we need to dive deeper into this. But for the most part, if somebody has under 500 pages indexed on a website, which uh, a good amount of people do, uh, especially if you're going to be brand new to managing an agency and getting new clients, a lot of your clientele will probably be under 500 pages indexed websites. And so, um, again, the audit is not meant to be extremely comprehensive. It's meant to just bring people in, get them from the free mindset. They saw your content and then into the paid content mindset, which is, okay, we're going through the lowest barrier to entry, which is $100, $200, whatever the audit is worth. And it's sometimes even worth just to give the audit away just so you can get people in the door and then upselling them to your service. Uh, okay, so last thing is realizing that streamlining anything, especially services, isn't easy. So at the end of the day, managing an SEO agency isn't easy. And if you can figure out how to take your services and somewhat productize them, like for instance, I've been able to take my SEO audit and turn it into sort of a product where people can just go and buy the service. And then, you know, if they just want to take that audit, use it for themselves or have somebody else do it, you know, that's fine. And if they want to buy my services, I have that somewhat productized as well, even though it breaks down to hours, which is at the end of the day, uh, my Hourly rate goes up based on the demand of clientele. So if I have a lot of people contacting me at once and I get, for instance, 10 new clients, the chances are my price is not going to be the same for next month if I keep those clients. So uh, generally my prices range between 100 to 200 an hour. Anything over that is kind of pushing it. And you want to make sure that you're not going too high unless you're doing something that um, is going to be uh, really complicated to solve. Like for instance, um, trying to fix a site with millions of pages indexed or something like that. But for the most part, anything above a hundred to $200 an hour. Um, if you're just doing simple SEO for like websites under 500 pages indexed or whatever, I would try to stick to those price ranges. Don't go below a hundred an hour. If you're doing SEO, uh, that just seems sketchy. And anybody who's charging that, you know, you kind of want to question, um, especially if they're an agency, if they're an individual or a consultant, it makes more sense. But if your end goal is to make an agency, you know, you really want to think about the overhead that you're going to have to pay for and all that good stuff. So if you want to hear more about this kind of stuff, let me know and I'll create more videos like this in the future. And uh, that's what you need to think about when you're hiring an SEO consultant for your agency. So until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.